The California Department of Public Health is holding a party to celebrate their great history. We, we attribute many good things to them, however, there's many things that we're upset about, including the cell phone issue. This is a ubiquitous device used by even children. Political suppression, industry infiltration has gotten to them and we're very unhappy about it. So we're here to tell them that and to rain on their parade. We promote healthy lifestyles. We give babies and fam young families, especially those in vulnerable communities, a strong and healthy start in life. I'm here today as the director of the California Brain Tumor Association, and we focus on prevention of primary brain tumors from wireless radiation because we have seen such an incredible increase in brain tumors, especially in younger people over the past decade attributed to cell phone use or living near a cell tower. The California Department of Public Health, probably about seven years ago, did their own research into cell phones and brain tumors, and they found that there was a problem, that cell phones were indeed causing gliomas, brain tumors. They then decided that they were going to write a document called Cell Phones and Health. Originally, it was intended for state employees only who had state-owned cell phones. Then they did more research of independent studies and industry-funded studies, and they realized the public needed to see this document, which is an excellent document with excellent safety tips for people who have concerns and should have concerns about cell phone use. Anyhow, they did not release it, and we kept calling, saying, where is it, where is it, where is it? And we had lots of different excuses given to us. It's sitting on so-and-so's desk. It needs to go to the governor to be signed. It didn't get released. This is a document that was prepared by the California Department of Public Health, and it's precautionary advice about the dangers of cell phones. And it references... Um, the ex you know, science, basically this was prepared in 2014 and it was ready for release to the public and someone, quote, higher up in the government suppressed this and has not been released. And Dr. Jill Moskowitz filed a Public Records Act a couple of years ago wanting to find out more information about this document. He's been quite involved and wonderful on this issue. He the lawsuit went to court just recently. The industry was defended by the Attorney General's office. So the California Department of Public Health in court said that, number one, this would harm the industry if they released it. Number two, it would cause chaos among the public. And number three, that the CDC had already issued warnings, which was not true. So the judge ruled in favor of Dr. Moskowitz. The, he, the document had to be released only to him, though, not to the public, which is really sad. We have now found out there were 27 versions of this. Taxpayers' money was spent to create this. They are adamantly refusing to adopt it and issue it to the public. This issue of cell phones and health risk needs government backing. Here it is, and the public can't see it. It's been suppressed, and probably by political appointees. We are angry, and we want them to know we're angry. We want the public to know. We want our legislators to know that we're angry. The judge ruled that it had to be released, and unfortunately, they defiantly put on their draft, not for public release. So that's why we were here today uh, protesting at the CDPH event. So I had an opportunity to go up to the director of the California Department of Public Health, Karen Smith, and she was very nice. And I said, um, hello, Dr. Smith, I'm Cindy Franklin, and are you familiar with this document? She said, absolutely. And I said, I've spoken to some of your staff people. I haven't had an opportunity to speak with you, but we need to get this released. This is important information the public needs to know. And I said, what? What needs to happen? What do we need to do to get this released? And she reached over and she touched my shoulder and she said, be patient, I promise. 
Don't know what that means, but we'll see. The fact that the California Department of Public Health has refused to release this cell phone and health document, which is excellent, makes it harder for us to educate our legislators that SB 649 should not be happening, that wireless radiation is causing cancer, electrosensitivity, and many other health problems, not just for us, but for wildlife, for our planet. And it's all connected. It's the same radiation. The SB 649 is going to be heard today by the Assembly Committee on Communications and Conveyance. It's already made it through the Senate. It's made it through one Assembly hearing. It's a horrific bill which takes away city and county's rights and people's rights as to where cellular equipment, including the new 5G, will be placed. It's a horrible law. Telecom industry wrote it, and we are all here to lobby against it and hope that our legislators can say the buck stops here. We won't tolerate this. If SB 649 were to pass, we would find wireless equipment, large poles with new 5G equipment, which is large. They call it small cells, but it's not small. It's large refrigerator size equipment in front of every I've been told in front of every five or six homes in every neighborhood in California. And the people in these communities and our local government will have no say in that. The state is basically deregulating this. If this had been released in 2014, we would not have SB 649. That's, that's how strongly I feel about it. Because the public would know the truth. So it's convenient for the cell, you know, the cell industry that this was suppressed all these years, three years now. So that's the unfortunate part of this. So we need to keep the pressure up. Um, we set up a little website called releasethecellphonewarning.com. It's got all this information on it. Um, it's got a link to email the governor and elected officials. And we're putting the, putting the pressure on, but it's only a few of us. We need more. This is a, a, a legislative effort across the country by the telecom industry to introduce these bills in every state. So I did find out it was introduced in Washington State and no one was there, no activist was there, I was not there. Um, but the cities were forceful enough in their opposition that it did not get out of committee. But I've heard that that same senator is going to be reintroducing the bill up there. A couple of years ago, the city of Berkeley passed an ordinance, which we wrote and lobbied about, that basically requires that every retail outlet that sells cell phones in the city of Berkeley post uh, information or hands out information that's already mandated by the Federal Communications, the FCC as everyone knows. Um, so basically that consumers are never supposed to wear or use a cell phone directly against against the, the torso, the body, you know, like women tuck them in a bra, people put them in their pockets. Uh, the FCC has warnings in all documents, user manuals in the phones that, that warn. The industry said they're advisements, but they're warnings about being overexposed to electromagnetic or radio frequency energy that could exceed the federal standards. So uh, all they're doing is telling people what the FCC wants them to know. But of course the industry didn't like that, so they sued the city of Berkeley. Um, we have a wonderful attorney, Lawrence Lessig, has been defending pro bono, and the case continues, and we'll probably go to the Supreme Court with it. So, so far we've won at the federal uh, court of appeals level. So. Um, it's a very simple ordinance. It just it just uh, mandates that the industry or the retail outlets inform consumers about what the federal government already wants them to know. You would think that this would be something legal, but no, the industry doesn't like it. So, you know, the courts are saying, well, we'll see how it goes here. So far, we're doing good. I was holding the poster at the Department of Public Health anniversary celebration, and I felt strongly that we needed to uh, try and ask for them to release the documents that they've written because the public needs to be aware of this issue. I live in Berkeley, California, and I'm on the health commission there, and we have, uh, in our city, uh, ordinance in place where when you buy the cell phone 
it's put up on a sign in the store that they are given notice as to the radiation and how to use it properly. And that's what needs to happen throughout the state of California.